our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. A graceful air display contrasts with a towering rocket at the Paris Air Show. The event is a giant marketplace for all things aerospace. So what's the industry all about? The space market is complicated. One word. The business really is a combination of applications and innovation. Global. Fragile. Still fragile after all these years. Every two years, industry figureheads get together at Le Bourget to talk shop. The main point of Le Bourget is networking, meeting people. We meet uh, some of our suppliers, some of our customers. The space business is quite a, a, a tight community. I wouldn't like to say everybody knows everybody, but there is certainly uh, a very good network. The parade of suits and ties suggests a wealthy industry with soaring profits, but that's not always the case. Selling satellite services may be profitable, but putting spacecraft into orbit is a tricky proposition. When you look at the accounts for space businesses, it's obvious that it's not necessarily in space that you make the most money. The industry makes money, of course, but it's not the most lucrative sector. Rocket launchers are a good example of this difficult business environment. The high-tech nature of the space industry demands a huge investment before any return. Most private investors wouldn't touch the launch sector. Among the established launch vehicle providers in Europe, it's Ariane Space. In, uh, in Russia, there's a couple commercially. There's a company called ILS, which competes with Ariane Space. Uh, in India, there's a company. In China, there's a company. Most of those companies that launch vehicles don't make a lot of money without huge government support. All the research and development to build the vehicle, to test it. When it fails, they've got to come back and redesign it, find out what went wrong. That costs an awful lot of money. Ariane Espace now dominates its sector with over 50% market share. It benefited from decades of sustained government support. Now, the key is consistency. It's all about both perfectly mastered technology and then a strategy, the decision to always carry out the same launches with the same launchers. That allows us to launch on time with a high level of reliability, which is exactly what the operators want. So, long-term investment is vital to an industry that's developing, building and launching the hundreds of satellites above our heads. Magali Vessier manages ESA's program to support research and development in the telecom sector of the space industry. She views close cooperation between public and private sectors as both justifiable and necessary. These sorts of partnerships work very well. For us, when we support a development project and there is private financing, effectively it allows us to do more with a little less public money. That's the first advantage. And the second advantage is that we're sure that what we're developing will be used. If a private sector company has put money into something, it's a good guarantee for the public sector that they have a strong interest in the result. The space sector is all about shared interests, be it developing a future capsule for the International Space Station or new communication satellites. The companies involved have multiple layers of ownership and cross-cooperation. Government bodies feed that growth. That's because space isn't just about business. Space is seen as a strategic investment. 
You have countries which are just discovering this strategic investment, like China. Well, they discovered it some time ago now. And India, which are investing massively at growth rates of 12% in China and 25% in India. You have countries which have always had ambitions in space, like the United States or Russia, which continue to invest at a high level. However, this industry leader believes Europe runs the risk of lagging behind. And today in Europe, ambition in space is flat. That's to say, budgets aren't going up. So the problem for us, European companies, is to find growth while Europe's ambitions in space are constant and the ambition of other countries is growing. And that, I can tell you, is very, very hard. The Galileo project is a good example of the challenge of developing major space infrastructures. The European navigation system has long been bogged down by squabbling over funding. As so often, it comes down to money. No, on the we're forced to re-evaluate our business all the time in order to try and cut the costs of our solutions in order that they're comparable with terrestrial solutions. One way to cut costs is to adapt technology from other sectors. In the last decade, there have been enormous strides, essentially in the leisure and commercial electronics markets in particular, um, and so that investment, which is colossal, uh, has really outstripped the sort of investment in, in, gen in many ways in space. And so we're seeing increasingly the sort of technologies that are developed for the mobile phone, for the uh, you know, home computers, Xboxes and things like this, uh, now finding a, a, a role to play in space. The cost of making the satellite spinning like a carousel around our planet may go down and the services they provide become ever more embedded in our daily lives. But putting them into orbit is still a huge achievement. Think about it. Uh, they've been launching rockets for half a century and the thing is still so touchy, despite billions of dollars invested all over the world, that one out of 11 or 12 rockets launched fail. One out of 11 or 12. Imagine walking across the street and you've got a one out of 11 or 12 shot of not making it across. That's the space industry even in 2009. So it, that adds a certain tension to it and a certain excitement that hasn't gone away. Space remains a rather unique industry. <laughs>